That's a nice big steel rod you've got there. And uh, we're on the new camera. Right, so this is the uh, job, first job for today. We're gonna fit this double glazed window. I'll let Nick explain why. 99s, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Each stage creates it's, its new problems, doesn't it? Or its challenges to overcome. That was a lovely breakfast, a nice easy start to the day. You well just a slice of ham on there. Lee didn't make it by the way, I made it. He made the coffee. Um, we are on our way home, we're in Taylor. We are going to, first of all, my cousin's, because um, he's going to get rid of the bulkhead for us. Apparently he has a scrap man that comes around because he does a lot of van conversions and things like that. So he's going to get rid of the, uh, the bulkhead for us. Then we're going to go to a place in Horbury. Um, a, a camper van place who may be able to advise us on the best systems for electrics and hopefully place the order today if we know what we're after. Um, then we're going to go to a company in Tingley to have a look at the wall in, in here. Rather than using cladding we're going to put like a uh, pine plywood uh, laminate pre-textured wall in, uh, in and on the roof. And um, new cameras coming today, just need to check whether that's out for delivery or not. And then we are going to Ikea to pick up the bed beams to build the bed. We've had a change of design on that as well, by the way. So we'll explain that a little bit later on in the series of um, what we're doing with the bed. And um, we have to nip to the apartment to get the box for the old camera, which we're gonna send back and get to one of those recycling places and get a little bit back, bit back for that. And Lee has a doctor's appointment. So we have a lot to do today. And um, busy day. about an hour before we get to my cousin's. hours later we've been doing all our appointments and meetings and all sorts of stuff so we've got lots of literature on um, camper van electrical systems we're still none the wiser so Nick's head's done in there he is um, and we are now on our way to IKEA to hopefully get the bed slats now we've seen these on YouTube loads of um, van life has used them to create their beds with um, so we'll show you them when we get them and uh, put the part numbers and stuff on screen so you can see them uh, metal um, what do you call them like beams are Be mid beams are called which extend um, so you, you build your bed base on that basically and crazy like they don't come with brackets they don't come with brackets so apparently you can get some from their um, spares yes, but you've got to send off for them so they, they like post you them but we also order some on ebay because people sell them on there um, so that's what's going off at the moment so we're going to Ikea now then to my mum's to pick up the new camera which has arrived which I'll be testing now when we get back to the lodge then it'll be a drive back to the lodge um, so it's all go today it's about four o'clock already um, and we've just had a sandwich and a packet of crisps I was thinking maybe we could have tea at Ikea oh. It's a fish and mashed potatoes with pasta sauce and peas. It's a mechanic, wasn't it? Well, yeah. That's a nice big steel rod you've got there. Right, so this is them scovers. That's, That's the cold. Code. They were £10, they're now 20 Yes, so we just need four of these and they extend as well. Yeah. I'll show you when we get, we're in the bed. Now we could get the lats, but the way we're going to do the bed, they're not going to be suitable. We're going to have to build us on because they've got a curvature in it and they've got a really nice mattress, yeah. which would probably be all right actually to extend the height of the bed. Feel it. It's all right actually. Is it a stiffy? Oh, I don't know. That's a bit, it doesn't sound a bit spongy. Right, we're in the van and we've been to Lee's mum's, we've picked up our bits from Ikea, as you saw, and uh, we're on the new camera, hence why I'm holding this about a foot from my face and it picks us both up. So we've got more scope now. Now before we used to have a lens clipped on, uh, but when we went to San Francisco last year, Lee dropped it and um, <laughs> it, it, rolled, it, it rolled down the street. <laughs> so um, we've, we tended not to use it anymore because it's so heavy. 
Um, now I'm thinking, I'm hoping that all the settings on this camera, which I've transferred from the other camera, have all been set correctly. The audio we're not sure about, so this, this scene may be a little bit quieter. Um, but we're on our way back to the lodge now. back what a day even though we've not filmed very much it's been a right day we haven't achieved very much we haven't achieved very much it's been quite frustrating yeah we've just not got the right things that we needed for the um van or anything like that um so it is nine o'clock would you believe it 8 49 p.m nick's just creating a salad a little salad with beetroot um, well, tomatoes. Oh, yeah. When you made it the other night, it was like an American salad. It was right, coleslaw, nice, yeah. and this looks a bit bland. balsamic. We got the balsamic. No, nope. I put some balsamic on Tesco's balsamic drizzle. Did you get this the other day? Yeah. Right. Ooh. So we'll be back with you guys in the morning. When we'll be doing some more van work, we'll show you the um, beams that we got from IKEA. Hopefully, building the bed base. The dilemmas we're facing with at the minute. Yeah, and we are thinking about what we're going to do with the bed. We might have an extendable bed so that we can make sure that we're definitely. Last minute design changes. Yeah, last minute design changes and stuff like that, which I imagine everybody goes through when they've got a, uh, a van build on the go. Um, so, we'll uh, see you in the morning. Right, welcome to the next day. Um, I'm just doing today's edit, which is a day at Epcot. And my lovely husband, Nick, has uh, just um, done this omelette. Lots of brown sauce on there for breakfast and a coffee. And uh, then we're gonna crack on with the day. Right, so this is the uh, job, first job for today. We're gonna fit this double glazed window. It's actually a metal frame. I think it's aluminium frame to make it lightweight. And then it's got a double glazed plastic window there, another one there, and then on the inside, if I turn it round, it's got like a clip and then it's hard to do while I'm holding the camera, but there we go, you can open the window. Now the problem that we're gonna have, and I've been avoiding doing this, is if you look, if you imagine the skin of the van is gonna have the hole cut into it, this section here goes inside the van, so it will flush up to the metal. But if you hold, hold on a second, and I will demonstrate, if you, look down the, the length of there, and you hold where the van skin's gonna go, there's actually, well, I'll try it with my finger, but basically, if you look behind my finger, there's a big gap. So if I put too much sealant on, it's gonna ooze out here, and if I don't put enough on, it's not gonna touch the van and seal it. So that is the dilemma that we are faced with this morning. Um, we have to use an angle grinder to get one of the struts off, and then cut a hole in it with a jigsaw, which I think is going to be the relatively easy part, as long as we get it level. And um, then we have to decide how we're going to fit it. Right. We have some new tools. Um, kindly um, loaned from Nick's cousin. I need. Who also does van builds. I need. Yeah. The grinding discs for this. So it's an angle grinder. Yeah, I've never used them before, so I don't really know what I'm doing. And we have to make sure we don't go through the van wall. Are they in there? Oh no, there, there, there. Oh yeah. Well, oh, that's are they first grinding aid discs? I don't know. And this is going to be used for? Cutting out the uh, strut inside. And by strut, this is what Nick means, I think. So I've just got to um, cut that out, cut that out. Um, not sure we need to do that one, but that's where the windows are going. So we need to get rid of that one. I'm keeping that away. It's hard because I don't want to go through the van. Is 
Is it working? Oh. Is it working? Yeah, but I, I, if I, it cuts through it so easy, and if I get too close, it's going to go through the other side, and that's the last thing we want. That was effortless to cut. It actually might be better to just cut the window out with that, you know, as well. A lot easier than, than the jigsaw. So the next job is this, the window at the side. So we've measured it out, Nick's put some pilot holes in. Ooh, fly, <laughs> a wasp in my face. Um, this is the window that's going in. And uh, hopefully we've measured it correctly. Nick's just uh, filing some things away in there. What's happened? Here we go. Ah, oh, I, th I thought something had broken. Moment of truth. Just gotta get these, these sharp bits before we file it down. Does that scratch the window? If not. Right. If this don't fit, I'm quitting. And if it does fit, I'll make a cup of tea. Oh yeah. A little, a little now, treat. Hopefully, it's gonna take some coercing to get in. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a, so it's a nice fit. Okay. You said you wanted some coercing. I know, but I didn't think it was this far out there. Yeah, okay. Right, a few hours later, and what we thought was going to be maybe an hour's job or so has taken much, much longer. I'll let Nick explain <laughs> why. Nines, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what oh, smells of silicon sealant? Explain the problem we had. Which bit? The fact that it won't fit in the frame. The screws that come with it are wrong. They're basically screws for metal, and it should be bolts. So I've had to put my own screws in, or my own bolts in, which then work straight away as soon as we tried it. But it's been a bit of a pitch. Yes, thanks. Right, so as we said, the window's in. We've had a delivery, and we may have a problem. Nick's just going to see if we have or not. Have we? I'm just going to measure. The problem we've got is the shower basin's right arrived. Where the shower tracing is. There's a there's a, a chassis bar here. There's a chassis bar here. So the shower basin plug hole has to fit either one side or the other. And also depth wise, going back, there may be another beam in the middle, a central beam. So I'm just measuring now. So eight to sixteen. So the right is a clear space, thank God. Oh, thank God for that. Right, right one. Eight, well, Nick's uh, just five, sorting that out. Right, I'll so show you the shower basin. It's supposed to be five kilograms, because we obviously we want light. Um, and that's going to go there in the corner with a shower cubicle around it. It is the lightest thing I've ever... Look, pick that with your thing, little finger. <laughs> it's so light. That is perfect. It costs, costs like 90 quid. From? Uh, from Victoria Plum. So it's supposed to, well it says it's five kilogram, but I don't even no feel way. like it's that. Right, we ha this is the problem, right? We've got a chassis there and a chassis there. These are pilot holes, which I've drilled through so I know where we can't go there or there. Okay, that's where the plug would be if we had it that side, there. And we can get away with it being that distance away because I've drilled a hole there, so I know that that's fine. And the distance from there to the back is also fine because I've just measured from the hole to where the start of the 
hole will be, which is eight centimeters, and it finishes at 16. And this area is clear, thank God. The same on this side of the chassis. So the problem we have, if we put it there, um, we could go a little bit closer actually. We could go like there, which would leave us a little bit of a cavity for pipes through that. And I've actually ordered a panel from Tamu. However, we didn't want to do that and it was too tight. Our first ever order from Tamu, by the way. <laughs> I'm just trying it because they've advertised everywhere now. We'd have to have it there. That's, oh no, but look at that. Which means we've got a big cavity there. Loads, yeah. However, I could probably make a, I'm just gonna think a, him, a him, pantry cupboard thing. Pantry cupboard, out. yeah, that'd be nice. But you're going to have to have, obviously, uh, an access yeah. panel for the shower taps. So it's not going to be full access. No. Right, on with the next job before it starts raining, because there's a lot of grey clouds coming. We're running cables. We're running cables. So, so we're, we're running the cable for the extractor fan. Yeah. And we're going to run, we're doing it overkill, we're running a 25 amp cable, um, about three metres, something like that. And then going to leave like a foot at one end and two foot at the battery end. But we have to get them through the ceiling void and we have to do that everywhere before we finish, finish the walls and seal them. So that's the task now. So when we finish there's going to be literally cables dangling yeah. everywhere. So this is the garage area um, in the final design. So oh, all yeah, yeah, all the uh, cables need to end here because the electrics are going to be here. So how the hell do I get that down this wall? Because we haven't fully decided what we're doing with this yet. Really, I need to take it kind of down there. Yeah. But that means I've got to take one of these lats off because it's too long. Each stage creates its new problems, doesn't it? Or its challenges to overcome something that you haven't thought about in the last stage. If we ever did it again, we'd know exactly. We'd be able to cut a, save a lot of time by... Yeah, save a lot of time, but yeah. So how the hell do I get that down there? Get your safety go go oh, goggles on tool. you. I need the glasses. A vibrator. <laughs> it's a vibrator, well, it's an there. oscillator. Your glasses are there. Where? Just at end. Right, I've never used one of these, but you can basically put that on your arm. Yeah? I want oh, right, okay. one I fancy doing it. Because it just vibrates. It doesn't work on soft materials, but it works on like wood. So I need to chisel out a conduit there and there. So this bit will actually end up falling off. <laughs> oh my god, I want one of these. <laughs> Nick knows what he's doing with electricals. Can I have another, uh, another um, um, cable tie? Yes. Um, so we have wires hanging down from everywhere. everywhere. So and... I'll explain in a second what we've done. Right, I'll try and give a bit of an update from what I can remember. So this in the garage is where all the electrical panels are going to go and every cable that we've got dangling around terminates in this area. So the ones that we've run in, we've run a single cable here that's going to be broken out that's going to have a bedside lamp on it with USB. Another one at this side and another one here, the last end point of it. And they're not going to be switched, they're just going to be turned on in the individual lamps so there's no way to turn them kind of on and off. Uh, the main lights, we've got uh, power cables that run across this wall here. One for the LED door lights, one for the main roof lights, and one for the shower. And then the lights then spur off the switches. So there'll be two lights here. There'll be a mains ceiling light and the door LED lights, which are going to be here and here. Uh, and then on the shower wall, in the cubicle, there'll be another switch that terminates on the wall on the outside of the shower that then activates the light in the shower and the extractor fan, which I've still got to fit. And uh, and then all these lights between the ceiling up here, they're just daisy chained from light to light. So all the LED lights will literally run off one string. And then we've got here, um, LED top and bottom and 12 volt fridge. We've just got to go up to B&Q now and get some two and a half mil 
um, electrical cable to run the 13 amp socket. So we're going to have one under the cupboard for the induction hob or anything else that we need. Well, we're going to have back. we're going to have one there in the kitchen. We're going to have one inside the kitchen cupboard in case we need it, and then we're going to have one here for Lee so we can plug it in when he's editing. So I need to go up and I need to measure how much we're going to need, and um, that's it. I'm going to make a spag bog with plenty of red wine. Right, Nick's nicked up to B and Q for a few bits. I'm just gonna uh, make a spag bog. I've not made a spag bog for a long time. It used to be uh, one of the um, things that I used to make quite a lot. It's the easy spag bog because I, uh, I bought Lee's Lloyd Grossman um, spag bog mixed toasted, uh, sorry, tomato and roasted garlic. I'm making it with this Vivera mince, which um, we've not tried before. So see how that goes. Um, a few mushrooms, a few onions, and we got some, well, I got some gluten-free pasta, even though Nick's not doing the gluten-free anymore. Um, it's where he can, he just wants to try, you know, cut back on it. And I quite like the gluten-free pasta as well. Just been to B&Q, and then come back and made a spaghetti bolognese. Lee's just made it, although his, is, his sauce is a little bit dry. I've had to put mine, a bit more uh, Lloyd Grossman in mine. <laughs> And uh, I'm just, I'm gonna, in fact, I'm going to put a bit of Hellman's in it as well. What the hell? Is it Hellman's? Oh, there's nothing wrong with it, it's fine. Henderson's, that's what I mean. Oh, well, that'd be a shame. Right, my spag was, spag, spag bog was, was spag beautiful. Was. Nick thought it would look a bit dry, so we added more ingredients to it. I did. Um, so one of the, when Nick was working today in the van, I went out to get a few deliveries, and one that arrived was a new, um, so sat nav system for the van. It's a bargain. Now it's about nine o'clock at night, and I said to Nick, You're not going to do it tonight. And he's like, Of course I am not. So here he is. I'm just connecting everything up. I'm not actually sure what I'm doing, to be honest. I so just kind of took the old one out and connected up the new one, connected all the interfaces. That was the old one. It was just like a box standard thing. It was a CD player, though. Have you got that CD out? That yeah. UB40. Um, so it had no sat nav, no screen, nothing, and it's been replaced with One this. Ooh. What the heck? It's working! <laughs> well, what the frig? Uh, I'm not really sure what's going off at the minute, but um, you can turn it down here. Also, it's all touch screen now, it's there's all no touch like. Screen. It's currently updating Google Maps. Ooh, what's this here? Uh, it's Google Maps. I've plugged the GPS receiver in. Everyone knows here. how we like our Google Maps. So updating Google Maps and it just says it's updating. So I've just got to update the software. So it's a little slow at the minute because it's um, it's doing a lot of updates because it's the first time it's been turned on and it's tethering off my phone, which is incredibly shite. I've just speed. enjoyed a um, bowl of chocolate I'm brownie. I'm coming in top. for it. I'm coming in for it. Welcome to the next day. Um, we've just got a few things to do today. We're going to build, hopefully, this partition wall, which will separate the cab from the main living area. And then carpet it. And carpet it as well and put in the cab. Door in. And put the little door in. In here. Hopefully. Yeah. So we've got wires everywhere. As you can see, we need to. Um, look at how much stuff we need and contact an electrical company. Yep. So I need to get on the roof and measure the solar panels. And you've been looking at where we can store I Taylor. Found, I found somewhere. In the winter and stuff like that. Well, not just the winter. As soon as the weather changes, as soon as we come back from France, the weather will be will be cold and I'm not freezing my ass off. So we've, we're basically looking for somewhere where we can park him and finish him off yeah. to do all the internal bits. So you've made a new scribe. Yeah, a big one. So we need to put a plywood sheet onto here cutting up to there, but we need to measure the shape of that rather than guessing it. So we're going to use a scribe to do it. So I need you to hold that on this piece of wood while I follow the contour of the wall and draw the arch, Okay, if that makes sense. Right, we've cut the uh, piece of wood. And Do we have a wager of whether it fits? Fingers crossed it's going to fit. Hang on, I've got to move all this stuff. Is it a bit too long? It's a bit. Hmm. We need to take a slither off the bottom. How are you gonna make a door here when that? Because I'm gonna cut it down there. How's it gonna like open then with a with a, put a hinge on it? Hinge on that. It's gonna be an internal frame with a hinge on it, and the door will swing this way. But it'll have the plywood stuck on it and the carpet, so from the other side it will just look seamless. Right. 
So this is for the driver's cabin side, which obviously we're carpeting, so it looks like it's just part of the cab and it's gonna go on the back of this. Um, and it's gonna be a completely enclosed, closed off cabin. Have we got this carpet from Amazon? Yep. Right, so... We had a little issue. We had a little issue, yeah, we've cut it wrong, but we've redone it. And this is where we see if it fits. Right. So this is dangled because that's going to fold up for the next bit. Up there. Yeah. But we need to get this board in place first. So to do that, it needs to stand on the plywood shelf at the bottom. Are you comfortable there? No, it's awful. I can't even see either. Oh, my back is broke. So, I need your help. Yeah, we're just, just cutting cut this bit of the carpet, then that'll go up, be stuck on with the, what's it called? Stick attack? Sticky glue. Sticky glue. And then uh, that's one panel done. This will be the door. Yeah. And then that slither will be at the end. Another stop to Wix. I'm sure it's going to be like our new favourite shop is Wix. Um, we just need some more wood to create this door with here. The frame. The frame and some bits and bats for the bed. Um, the hinges have arrived for the bed, but we're not going to get to, to that till tomorrow. And my mum and dad's on the way as well. They phoned up, um, just said, might come and see you. We've got some pizzas and some chicken. We're like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> so they're on the way. Um, so that's this tea sorted for tonight. Pizza and chicken. And um, there you go. Just checking out the cladding for if we put it on the roof. I think we're going to do it for the roof. Yeah, tongue and groove oh, cladding. Slots into each other quite easily. And then screw that to the roof. And, and then we paint that. Paint that white. But it's got a lot of knots. It's my only concern. Mm. Yeah, but you won't see much when the paint is white. You would. It would look like painted knots. Mm. But you could fill them with wood filler, I suppose. I kind of like that rusticky look though, for the roof. No, but everywhere look like a bleeding sauna. Right, we're back from Wix and we are making a door. So we've done the frame. A warped door. Well, yeah, we a little bit warped. this panel of wood. Because yeah. that was bent as, a, bent as a, dog's bag, a dog's back's leg. So anyway, we're making a door. Um, the frame is there. Nick's just putting the hinges on. Um, so I'm indenting into the wood because the gap is, needs to be tight because the carpet is going to seal the gap, if that makes sense. Yeah, and then the idea is we haven't got the, um, like, the, I don't know what they're called. It'll have something there that you push and it'll open. The catch. Like, yeah, the catch. So, and then we haven't got that yet. And then it, that'll all be um, covered with, what is it we're putting over there? Upholstery. Carpet upholstery. No, 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 on this side. Oh, it's like um, oak lats. Yeah, oak lats. So it should look like a, a whole wall and then you just push it. You won't see there's a door. Yeah, and the door will open so that we can get to the storage up there. Emergency hatch if you needed to get into the cabin. And it'll also give us um, access to this down here, which can be used for storage, like shoes and, and stuff or whatever. Right. I must say I'm impressed with that. Very impressed. Fits there. Just needs the brackets on. And this panel, or this panel is warped, because the wood's wet. Yeah. So we're hoping this bracket will pull that section back and make it a bit more in alignment.
right, we've packed up for the night. However, we've come across a problem, which I need to give some thought. So we've built the door. Problem is, the door here is too close to the wood there. And when there's a plywood board on it, the two bits of plywood board are gonna hit each other and stop the door from opening more than that. And then obviously on top of that, we've got the oak lats. So what I need is some kind of a hinge that lifts the door way forwards as soon as you start to open it and then swings free all the padding. So um, I've texted my cousin to find out if there's any solution. I want my tea now. Which one's starving? Right, it's a couple of hours later. We've had a nice pizza and some chicken and things which my mum made. I want a slice of toast. You want a slice of toast? Yeah. I'm coming to bed, me. I'm tired. Still light outside though, but um, we had a full on busy day again. Um, started at seven, finished at seven and um, Nick still thinks we didn't do enough today. It was, it was like Nick could build a van in one whole day and still say we've not done enough today. <laughs> um, so thanks for watching today guys. Hit the like button, click the notification bell, drop us a comment below. Uh, my parents are here in they're watching some TV. And um we having a day off tomorrow. No. We'll see we you not. on the next vlog for more band things. Oh.